Hi, everyone. Welcome to Genealogy Adventures. My name is Brian Sheffy. And I'm Donya Williams. Hello today. Hello. How are you guys doing? Uh, we all hope that you're having an awesome Sunday. And for those of you who've been in storm ravaged parts of the country, we hope you were spared the worst of it. If you were hit, hopefully um you're coming through the um coming through the other side of it. But parts of the country are definitely in our thoughts today. Yes, amen. Yes, it is. Um, so we have quite the show for you today. We are gonna be talking about using inward and outward slave manifest records that were produced here in the United States as part of the sec what's called the second mid middle passage. And by that, we mean enslaved people who were moved from either the Northern colonies into the deep South or from the upper South slaveholding states into the lower Southern slaveholding states. Right. And in other words, Brian wants to make me cry today. Yeah, this is going to be part two of, of, Don, of Donnie in tears. Not intentional, I have to admit. So that's going to be the, um, that, that's the basic framework of the show. And I'm going to agree with Afrogenius.com, that the awesome website that if you're not familiar with it, you should definitely be using it. Afrogenius called this the most underutilized resource in African-American genealogical research. Yeah, um, it is. Because I don't think, actually, I don't think a lot of people even realize that these records actually exist. Um, and before you know, I think they think, I think they know they exist. I just think they don't know where to find them. It may be some people that know, but just don't know where to find them. True. And, it, you know, that's fair enough because they are all over the place. Um, specifically, depending on what kind of ship you're looking for, where your, your ancestor was transported. So before we get into um, that map that I want to spend a little bit of time talking about. So basically, you know, we're talking about a time period before mass transportation, before there was easy transportation. And a lot of this kind of research boils down to what we call critical thinking. And in this context, what I mean by that is your ancestor could have only gone from outside of the Deep South into the Deep South, especially during the 1800s, by foot or basically by land or by water and by water it could be down a river it can be down an ocean so that's just kind of really breaking this thing down um, to its most basic level and i'm, I'm also going to say this is going to be a slightly unusual show for us we haven't done a show like this for a while because most of our shows are kind of a narrative history or storytelling or people talking about their ancestors with again wonderful stories to share. This episode is going to be very much a teaching episode. I'm really looking forward to it because I said we together we haven't really done one of these for for quite some time. Quite and uh, some time. <laughs> this one is kind this one is kind of long overdue. So while I've been doing the introduction, Donnie's been letting various um, Facebook groups know that the the show is now live on air. Are you kind of in a position where you can throw that that map up? Yeah. I am. Let me share the map. So this is a map by a gentleman called Laszlo Kubini. I had to, Kub sorry, Kubinia. I had to write that down. Still struggling with the pronunciation. Laszlo, I apologize if I've slaughtered your name. And it was produced as part of the Digital Scholarship Lab at the University of Richmond, and it was reproduced in the Smithsonian um, Magazine. Sorry, it didn't share it. Okay. There we go, getting there. Is it sharing? There it is. I see it. Now. Can you make the, is that, because I can't really tell by my monitor, is that kind of filling up the screen? I can there make we it go. bigger. Okay, if you can make it bigger and if you can center it more on, scroll up more towards Virginia. There we go. That's perfect. Thank you okay. so much. No problem. So what I love about this map is it provides some of the main ways that enslaved people were taken into the Deep South. So this is the slave trading routes, 1810 to 1860. And you can see, as I was talking about, there are land routes, which are largely done in kind of a burnt, I'll just call them red, looks more burnt orange, but I'll call them red. Also one in blue. And 
let's start. What I like about the blue and the green one, these were actually established by some of the most notorious, infamous, largest slave traders um, in American history. One is named, I can't remember their first names, but the blue one is called the Armfield Coffle Route. Right. And that was a big route that took people from the East Coast into Kentucky and Tennessee through uh, what's called Abingdon in Virginia. There is the green one called the Waller Coffle Route. So those are so basically between those two, that already gives you two routes that people arrive, left parts of the the slaveholding uh, slaveholding territories going into other parts. You can find out more about who established them, what slave traders were were using those the most often, to give you more ideas to to research for clues about where your ancestors came from. Now. You can see this, at first it looks really kind of confusing, but both of us are kind of, kind of we're gonna break this down for you. <clears throat> so recently I've been doing a lot of research for people who's say the last two or three generations of their family have been located in Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. And when you hit that, start hitting the censuses where they start saying where their parents came from, and these were all freed people. So all people born about 1830, 1840, living into the 1880s, 1890s, in the, the ninth, early 1900s. So when the census starts asking them not only where they bo were born, but where their parents were born, you can see people saying, I was born in Louisiana, but my mom, she was born in North Carolina, and my father was born in Tennessee. Or you start seeing, you know, you start seeing, oh, South Carolina, Georgia. North Carolina, Maryland, every once in a while, I'll see something really kind of eye-opening. You start seeing um, things like Pennsylvania, for instance, or Maryland. Um, so just places you really wouldn't expect um, to, to kind of see. So I was thinking in trying to actually research the route that their ancestors came from, that's where I found this map. And I started looking at all the little arrows. Now, Ideally, this map would have extended a little further north into places like Philadelphia, Boston, and Rhode Island, because believe it or not, those three places back in the day, and New York, those four places in the north, in their history, actually shipped thousands of enslaved Africans from their ports to Virginia, Charleston, and into Florida, kind of basically all up and down the eastern seaboard. So for those Massachusetts ones, I was thinking, well, that was clearly done by sea. And that gave me a port and again, slave traders to, to look for. So that, that was really helpful. But I'm gonna give you a for instance. <clears throat> so looking at Virginia, which is in the upper right-hand side of the map, you'll see Richmond. I want you to go a little further over until you see Alexandria which is just to the north of Richmond. So I, now Shelley Murphy is gonna really laugh because I was kind of surprised by this. In its day, Alexandria almost rivaled Charleston in terms of the number of outward bound enslaved people that it was shipping around the United States. Um, that, that kind of floored me a bit. So we have Alexandria going into Richmond I would like you guys, if you can see it on the screen, looking at Richmond, follow that red line to the left to Abingdon. Abingdon is one of these, it's an unusual place. It's buried all the way in the western part of Virginia. It is a very, very rural place. Even to this day, it's it's almost like stepping back into a, into a time warp. And I could never understand why Abington was such a, a center of slave sales and slavery related kind of businesses and, and ephemera. And there's a reason for that. Abington sits along, the, that's a huge mountain, the Blue Ridge Mountains going into the Appalachians that run all the way down those states. Those are some of the most impenetrable mountains on the Eastern Sea, on the Eastern side of the United States. The reason why Abingdon, and this is where a knowledge of topography and geography is really important with genealogy, it sits in a gap 
in the mountains. And if you look at town names all around Abington, you will see the name Gap, Stone Gap, Bear Gap. There's just all these towns with the name Gap because there's a natural gap. That's the reason why so that's the reason why that trail even exists. That's probably why Abington exists. It started off as a trading post because it just sits in this natural place that uh, that allowed easy travel from the east coast going into newly opened kind of western lands. So we have all that activity going into Abingdon. From Abingdon, we can see uh, you know the, how the trail goes in, around Kentucky into Missouri. But this is the branch that I really want to take a look at. It's that lower one going towards Knoxville in Tennessee, then going past Glatton to Nashville. Then from Nashville, we have two spots, Natchez in Mississippi, New Orleans in Louisiana. And this again is where critical thinking is coming into play. And again, looking at Nashville, going down until you get to about the upper quarter of Mississippi, you're gonna see where that trail breaks into two. One line goes to Natchez, the other route goes to New Orleans. <clears throat> well, that gap is a junction. And it's a shame it didn't really give any kind of geographical information about where that gap was. But Donia and I, I so I phoned up Donia because she's more familiar with Mississippi than I am. And I'm like, Donia, where do you think that that juncture, that juncture is? So we got an 1855 map from Library of Congress. We blew it up. We zeroed it in to approximately where we thought that junction was. And where did you say that was? Greensboro, between Greensboro, Greenwood, somewhere uh, in that area, right under o Oxford. Oxford is like right here, and um, it's it's not far, so it's right in that middle area, coming down into Greensboro. Okay. And um, when we paid it the attention and found where Greensboro was, we saw that the Mississippi River was right beside it. Oh no! It was um some. It was the Black Something River, and it but, flowed into. But it, yeah. Yeah, it flowed into the Mississippi because I couldn't work out, or we couldn't work out why the junction would be there. So if you look, the one that splits to the left and goes down to Natchez, that lead that was a river that led into the Mississippi River, which then went to Natchez. Right. Still don't understand what was going on on the right hand side that led down to New Orleans. Cause I didn't, on the map, I didn't see a river. Well, no, certainly this not. may have been a walk. That may have been this, a walk. This may have been a walk. So according to the ledger that's right here on the side, the red is actually, it's land and sea. See. So, so somehow at some point, I guess going towards the left, towards Natchez, that's the one that would definitely hit the Mississippi river, come to the Mississippi river. But this one, this was a walk. So they, this was a walk. This was, as our AE put it, a trail of tears. Mm -hmm. A slavery now, trail of tears, as AE put it. If I suspected that my enslaved ancestor came down that route, and again, I would suggest that anyone who's in that 1870 census is either saying that they were born, like around that Tennessee area, if they were born in Tennessee, North Carolina, or the apparent was, that's the spot that I would focus on around um, Greenwood, uh, Greenwood and Oxford. I would go to newspapers.com or Chronicling America, plus whatever other kind of Mac newspaper archive sites. And sometimes, you know, I think Mississippi also has its own kind of old newspaper collection. Yeah. Uh, it's got a web the website for those. You, I would start researching slave traders. Start you know finding... who could have been a really good person to actually help us through this would have been Melvin because he does a lot of research in Mississippi. Mm. And Melvin actually asked, um, is this the present day Natchez Trace? Um, is this the present day Natchez Trace? And I and I'm gonna answer by saying no. This is 1810 to 1860. So this is that's what this slave tra trading route is based on that. So it's definitely um, not that. 
So again, what I would do for that particular junction around Oxford, Mississippi, go to those period newspapers around when you think your ancestor would have been transported and start researching. Because again, slave traders needed business. They needed enslavers to either sell their enslaved people to them or to basically hire them to take them into the Deep South to sell them in the Deep South. Right. Um, or just to sell them to the slave trader outright, and then the slave trader would just on their own accord take them into the Deep South. But wherever there was a business, there will be advertisements. Um, I've seen them. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've seen them too, Donya. Um, the, yeah. the, you know, the slave trader advertisements. From there, you have their names. The next step, that I would think about is where I could find out more information about that slave trader outfit to see if their business records still survive. There's no guarantee that they would or that they do, but doing the due diligence and exhaustive research, part of the genealogical standards of proof, unfortunately, this is what African Americans have to do. Um, I would probably contact a uh, Oxford or Greenwood area historical society find out if they can give you advice about where you can find old business ledgers, old business papers. Um, University of Mississippi, um, because they have a research library, they have an archive, they might be able to, you know, not only would they be knowledgeable about that, you might find someone who would be really interested in, in helping you solve that. Yeah, Ole Miss is definitely a good resource. They, you know, mm -hmm. if you, if, if, if. <laughs> <laughs> I went so, to school in Mississippi, guys. So that I went to mm -hmm. the, the Jackson State University. That um, although we lost the the bowl, the celebration bowl, we did win the SWAC champ. So fried up J State. But yeah. So are there before we kind of cycle cycle away from the map? Are there? Does anyone have any questions about the map or what's being relayed or? <clears throat> Any questions about any more kind of information that you can you can get from this? Because the, the, it's not apparent, but there are some nuggets of gold here. And there's some really good focal points to kind of narrow down uh, research. Um, so I have Lisa okay. Dembski. She's saying, my cousin possesses an interview of my second great grandmother. She was born in Virginia. She was sold in Norfolk, traveled to Charleston, Savannah, then Dawson. Terrell County, Georgia, is oh wait, I lost it. Is where she was enslaved. This map doesn't look like it follows that route. I guess they didn't always follow this map. Her journey happened in the 1830s. We're actually getting ready to go on something like that if we're done mm -hmm. with this map. So well, again, get it's going to. I would say the other factor that needs to be considered in this is whether, because not all people who were taken into the Deep South were sold into the Deep South. Some came with their enslaving families. Uh, we've seen that from our own Edgefield family um, in South Carolina. I've seen it in my, my Virginia and North Carolina families. Um, an enslaver dies, they bequeath their enslaved people to their various children. Say, for instance, a daughter, Janie, gets married. Um, she or her husband decides, oh, I've had enough of Edgefield. I hear there's great lands opening up in Alabama. Let's go down there. And they take all their enslaved people with them. Um, so that's the other way, obviously, that, that people arrived. So um, we do have some um, questions. Mm -hmm. um, one person asked, and I don't remember you saying anything about a birthplace, but it says, could you repeat what you said about birthplaces in Tennessee and North Carolina? Oh, I was just giving an example. I was saying if in the 1870 census, someone said, you know, someone living in Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana said that they were born in North Carolina or Tennessee, or on those early, that eight, that 1900th census, I can't remember which one it is, the first one that asks the people, well, where were you born? Where were your parents born? Someone was someone again in Mississippi, Alabama, or Louisiana on that census said that their parents were born in Tennessee or North Carolina. That red line from like Nashville and um, around the uh, Gallatin and Knoxville, Gallatin, Nashville area going down, 
those are points along that that <clears throat> that route that I would try to find out more information about who the slave traders were that were operating up and down that that particular route, or to find out what enslaving families in the county that your research came from, Nash came from Tennessee or North Carolina, who may have also come down that right route, taking their enslaved people with them. Right, um, and then. Uh... I, I am not going to even attempt to say your name because I don't want to mess it up. The last name is No. Um, they said, thanks for this. What Indian tribes were along those routes? Was there is there an overlay? I know that when we were looking at the Mississippi map, they there were a lot of Native Tell American you. yeah names. But I, I personally don't know if there was an overlay or anything like that. Again, Melvin Collier is a very good person for Mississippi research, and he is listening in. Mm -hmm. so, I don't, um, I don't want to misspeak on that, so I, yeah. I can't really answer it. But you know, Mississippi and Alabama, and that lower part of Tennessee, and parts of Georgia, and parts of Northern Florida were all part of the Mississippi Territory, right? Um, so that which was carved up and cut up in any number. of configuration. So, you know, looking at that part of the country, we already know that there's going to be Cherokee, there's going to be Choctaw. I can't eat so I can't even yeah. begin to rattle off all all of yeah, the tribes. Yeah, we would yeah, we wouldn't be able to do that. And then But also Gina don't Lewis, but also ahead. don't forget that Native Americans were all largely, not entirely, but largely cleared out from this area. That's the whole reason why there are plantations and farms and stuff there That's so true. you have to be yeah. mindful of that too given the time period by that yeah mm -hmm. you're right so gina lewis asks i know you're talking about slave traders in 1810 but do you know who might have been transporting slaves in north carolina in early 1700s around the craven county north carolina That's we're not necessarily bit. and we're not necessarily talking about just those in 1810 we're just we're giving you routes am i right and Yep, and, routes. and how it went. So some of these numbers, this is just an 1810 to 1860 map that we're utilizing. Um, but sometimes it, it could go back further because when we were looking things up, that the next stuff that we're going to show you, I'm going to stop sharing this. Okay, Brian? Yep, that's fine. Um, when we were looking at other things, dates were, were varied. They were varied from... Um, what 1850 to, to I mean 1830 to 1850 maybe a little earlier in this um mi, mi, I guess later 1700s into the 1800s so these were different things and we're going to show you you know where we found those things so for instance the that North Carolina Virginia Kentucky stuff that would have been much earlier those routes would have been established much earlier than the lower south because again that lower southern region that was Native American territory for the most part for a while before it became right. part of the American territory. Someone was also asking a question. Are you going to tell my Reese Anderson? Yes. She says, I have a lot of white DNA matches, fourth to fifth cousins in New England, as well as Canada. So that may have something to do with it, too. Oh no! Actually, it was it was Gina Lewis's question. So oh, that's what I just because, answered to. You. That's what I just said to you. Yeah, my again, what I said earlier is to try to find contemporary North Carolina newspapers for the Craven area. Research slave traders. They would have taken out advertisements. There should be. They may even appear in local history books. If you go to Hathi Trust um internet archive or google books type in slave traders craven north Car she did say craven didn't she craven mm, north she carolina craven county. yeah craven, craven county. county um and again you might you might be able to to get more information that way and then LaCrista Sims, you guys are coming today. Was there a river or land or land route from Mississippi to Louisiana to East Texas? So thinking about that map, I, I mean we had the one, we had the, the big black river that ran into the Mississippi River. Does the Mississippi River run into Louisiana? 
Because when we looked at that map, one of the mm. things we noticed was like it was almost like a triangle. That was something that we didn't show. It actually was going all like all in a circle from it would hit Louisiana, go up, go through the Missouri area, come back around, go through to Virginia, come back around, hit the um the Nashville, all that, and it was coming right back down again. So it really kind of went into this whole crazy triangle slash circle type thing. Mm. So see now that would be a know. good question. That would have been a good question for Yaya or um Phoebe. Because they Yeah, or or I'm telling you, or Melvin. Melvin. Well Melvin I was thinking is... more of those two because she the woman was talking about, about Louisiana. So I'm they may well I would say from there to Texas, you again it's gonna be one of two ways. It's gonna be land or sea. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with that one. Um, so then Shelly said they were truly masters. Where'd you go? Shoot. Okay, they were truly masters at the slave trade. The book is well worth reading. Um, then Reese Anderson said, "Don't forget Caribbean people on this show. Now, as much as we've got, as we've gave to this country, don't forget us." You guys are never forgotten. I don't, I don't, we're, Carib we have Caribbean blood. I mean, it all comes through this whole thing. Just right now, this particular talk is about this whole. Inter, inter, inter United States. Right. You know, we, 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 we like to stay on topic, but if you well, want to suggest that as a future topic, drop us a line. Yes, always, always, always happy to hear about I show ideas. Yes, genealogy <laughs> adventures live at gmail.com. You can definitely do that. Definitely. <laughs> yes. Um, well, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to keep this really short because I really do want to keep this focus. I'm currently researching a family who, the free people of color, who came from Cuba. They were, you know, they, they were brought from Cuba into Florida. So, you know, and like I said, Donnie and I talk about our Barbadian links all the time. So all the we, time. We, do, all yeah, the we time. do appreciate that. I got my seniors, man. Got my seniors. <laughs> Can you bring up that wonderful universe uh, Library of Virginia website? Yes. This will make Shelly happy. It'll make Shelly happy. Okay. I had to see which one it was. So as Donnie and I were saying, part of the part of the issue with this research is there is no one repository for slave ship manifests. They are everywhere. They're in so many different collections. Um <clears throat> this is the one. Okay. So we're going to start with the LVA one um, because, it, again, it, a lot of our ancestry will go back, not everyone's, but a lot of enslaved ancestry will go back to Virginia in one way, shape, or form, even if enslaved people were brought further north through Virginia to get somewhere else. And the Library of Virginia has done a wonderful job in terms of digitizing the, the, the inward um, manifests that it has, and also it's on it's it's outward slave shipping manifests, and I don't know you can you're kind of you can select any of the ones that look interesting to you. You just kind of open it up and and talk about the information. Okay. Oh, I thought you wanted to take them from the beginning and what you pushed in, but um, my bad. So. Oh, Slave Manifest for Edgefield. I don't want to do that one. We do our family all the time. <laughs> Let's do go, go to this one. I don't think this, I think this is the one that doesn't have the um, images. Do you want the one with images? Uh, if we could. Okay. Well, that quickest one would be Edgefield. Sorry. Well, it's just the name of the ship. It's just a kind of coincidence. Um, I'm looking at something different. 
it's so, not opening up. This is the, oh, sorry, this is the Encyclopedia of Virginia. That huh? was that, that was, if you go to the email on that number, that first listed link, Encyclopedia of Virginia Slave Manifest, it's that one. Now, how did it get, I must have closed it by mistake. I'm sorry, guys. Because while Donya is bringing that up, the other nice thing, and not every, we're going to get into this in a, in a micro minute. Which not, one are you talking about? I'm sorry. It, in the email where I, where I have the links, there's one, two, three, four, the one that's marked number one. The wonderful thing that the Library of Virginia does is it gives you a synopsis of the record before you even open it. And yeah, I, we're going to come back to that. Not every, not every resource that has these does that. Okay, I found it. Sorry. <laughs> and again, just kind of going through the, oh, there we it? go. I believe. So where do you want me to go? Okay, if you scroll down. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one. This one? When it says, uh, ship manifest listing the enslaved. That's okay. the one. So the wonderful thing about, you know, so reading this, handwritten ship's manifest detailing the transport of 92 slaves. It is a single sheet of white paper folded in half. So, I mean, that's the, as painful as what we're going to see is, you know, it's even giving, it's even describing the actual resource that we're about to, about to, to see, um, with text handwritten in black ink on all pages. <clears throat> on the first page is a sworn signed statement that the slaves named within the document were not imported after January the first, eighteen o eight, because after that date, it was illegal to import Africans into this country, even though it happened to my four times great grandmother who was illegally imported into North Carolina. We know it happened. You know, you've got the Clotilda, all of that. So if we click on this, but it's interesting that Virginia made them swear that I, I find that interesting. Okay, where do you want me to click? Um, so if you open up the, if you click on the document and then that should give you a little, yeah, that's perfect. You can kind of scroll it up towards the top and to the left. So you can see, so in this, there we go. So we can see number, you know, the names of the Negroes. Um, I, it's giving their age. That's, you see where it says three, 30, five, five. So that 30 is an age. Then it's giving their height in feet and in inches. It's describing, I think that says color. Is that what it says? Ages? It does. It says C-O-L-O-U-R, and I can't really. I think that's color. And then remarks. So number one is Clowney Ford. Ford. So last name given. But it's entry. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry. That's his wife. That's, cl That's Clowny, comma, Flora. It it it's claw. It's cl either Chloe, or or f I'm looking. I, it looks like Ford to me. That's what I. Or thought. it could be Floyd, but it's them and chil and four children. Children. Yeah. Yeah. See, wonderful cursive writing. I'm yeah. sure you can all empathize with this on that. She was thirty, five foot five inches copper colored so we already know she's going to have mixed ancestry of some description um then going down to number two you've got john that says ditto no that's oh problem. those are her those, those are, the oh, those are her kids those, those are, are her the kids so got this it. one is seven and he's four feet and then you got the next one he's five and the next one is four and then the the last one who's named after mom 
is Chloe Ann. Yeah, that's a baby nine months nine old. Nine months. And they were all of dark complexion. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this is where the tears come, guys. So, for people who weren't meant to have surnames, because, again, that's what we've been told. And it's what I was told in my history classes. Slaves did not have last names. Well, there's Eliza Smith. We already believe that that's Chloe Ford. So now we have Eliza Smith. She's 19. She's five foot ten and she was some tall. Yeah, she five foot ten and something quarter. Yeah. She's black. Um I'm just kind of because we have Donnie, this is something this is one that Donnie and I did not look at this morning. So if I pause it's because I'm a bit blown. Look at all of those surnames. Yeah, we weren't this is supposed a to have we weren't supposed to have those. Yeah, this Look is a Hawkins, at... number seven, and mm-hmm. Mariah Hawkins. She was 20. She was five foot three and a half in dark. Um, yeah. Number 12, Amy Diggs. Yep. And one child. And one child. 16, Melinda Davis and one child. Yeah. And These they, are... the, the thing, they actually named the kids. Yeah. Now, what is the chances that Number 14 and number, oh, where did I just see this? Okay, 15 and 17. Are those two girls both called something Mariah? Anne is that, Mariah. are they, they are both called Anne Mariah. So They're what is the likelihood called, I, I, that 16 and 14 are sisters? Charlotta and Melinda. What are the odds that two women who are pretty close in age, 25 and 21, oh are going to have two daughters named the same name. Oh, my God. I didn't even recognize that. Mm-hmm. One is two and one is one and a half. Yep. Wow. Wow. See, those are the, those are the things that we just kind of spot. <sighs> Yeah, this is whew, okay. Bree, we can't assume that those are the enslavers' surnames because all of these people have different surnames. Now, I've seen record old records, like 1700s records, where some of my enslaved ancestors had their surnames, and it was the it wasn't the well, it was the enslavers' surname because he was their ancestor. But that's another story for another day. Um, but these are their surnames. Um, so let me ask you this, Brian, because it's a lot of Hawkins. There are a lot of Smiths. So is it safe to assume that a lot of these people were un these are the same these were the enslaved people for the 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 slave owners? They were all like all of them. So the two mm-hmm. Davises and the two Smith the Smiths and the Hawkins, they were all under the Hawkins slave owner. And the Smiths were all because see, number twenty five, here's a William Diggs. Mm. That would be I I would say that was a very that's a very reasonable premise and a very reasonable hypothesis. Yeah. And if we could figure out where these people were coming from, specifically in Virginia, to be able to research that. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, okay. again, there's two Blackstons. Number nineteen. Three. Oh, three. That's it was true. Three. Nineteen yeah, twenty twenty one. Right there. Mm-hmm. Three of them. I should say so. there's a couple of digs. Now, oh, there's a Sims. I'm 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 floored by this. This is ah, oh, they ain't gonna Brian. Um, I still keep cycling back to whether it was this enslaver's surname or not. The myth has always been our people didn't have surnames. Now, whoever ended up buying these people might have insisted that they change or, you know, adopt their surnames, kind of like what James Henry Hammond did in, in South Carolina. He just gave all of his enslaved people the last name Hammond, whether they wanted it or not. Right. Because we see so, them start dropping it. 
Right. So Dot Red said maybe this was how they hid the slave trade by giving surnames. Why are you too surprised by the names similar in age? I'm I'm not surprised. It's just hard to see. We're it's trying hard. to work out family. We're not surprised. We're yeah. trying to work out family relationships. And you it's hard two to see. You have two women. And again, it's always about trying to keep an eye on these things. So we have two women in their early 20s who have different last names, but name their daughters, who are very exactly close in right. age, the same name. Because um, again, doing this kind of research, and I don't care what part of the slaveholding part of the country my ancestors came from, naming conventions were everything. Right. They were everything. Um, and Anne Mariah, I mean, I'm not going to say that that was an, a distinctive name, but you don't see many. I don't see any other. Right. In this list of 90 something people. I mean, this it, actually it is Anne Mariah Hawkins, number she, seven. And she's she's number mm. seven. And she was in the um, she was 20. So. I don't know. Maybe Mariah is just a, a sur another surname. I don't know. It's really weird, though. Mm -hmm. But as as far as the way it is, but the fact that they're there, you you almost at a point where you can kind of figure out that a group of these people are either family or enslaved by the same person and or enslaved by the same person so it's not that it's, it's shocking or that we're surprised it's just really trying to point it out number one and most importantly hard to see and again that naming convention perfectly done with chloe chloe ford she's right. chloe and she's got a daughter called chloe right right you know and we just see that all the time in our ancestry so that was the library of Virginia that I just wanted to do a, to do a quick whistle stop tour of. Well, one th a question was asked by Renee, mm -hmm. Renette. She wanted to know what it said. I don't see a way to turn it size sideways, Renette, because she wanted to know about the the remark in the middle, and it says manifest of Negroes, mulattoes, and I can't see that word. Um, it says of. Oh, I think that's where they had to swear the oath that they weren't brought into the United States after January something, 1808. Remember in that description, it did say that there was an oath? Yes. So basically, that's what this is, Renette. It is, it is talking about who's on the boat and how much it weighs, because here's the amount, 155 tons as far as the boat with the people on it. And um, it's just the overall oath of the captain. So that's what that is. And yes, I'm sorry, I misspoke. It's um, This is from Virginia Humanities, not Library of Virginia. Right, right. Okay, so you want to go to the next one? Uh, can you open up the Ancestry, the Ancestry link? Oh, I thought we weren't going to use that one. And that one I did close. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Well, that one I just want to show them that it exists, but we're going to actually search on the... National, was it the, the National Archive? The National Archive site. Okay. I will open that one up next. Y'all hear my clicking? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's the um, Ancestry one. And when Brian called me, as uh, far as the Ancestry one, we were trying to, when you go in here, I don't care what state you typed in for departure, for example, it's going to show you how many records they have total. So the total records that Ancestry has is like 60,413. So Brian asked me to like before to type in Arkansas. Okay, actually, can you just scroll up just a little bit, uh -huh. just so they can see the title? So basically, there are a number of inward and outward slave manifests, and we're going to see the breadth of this when we get to the National Archives website. <clears throat> but for this, I was really, because Donnie and I always speak about the East Coast, and for once, I really wanted to try to find records that were, that transported people down the Mississippi. So like steamboats, enslaved people who were transported into the deep south 
on steamboats. And I know that that happened. If you think about it, the Mississippi River was the I-95 of its day. Everything was going up and down the Mississippi River, including enslaved people. So I thought it would be really, you know, it would be interesting to show you a record. And I apologize because I'm, and we're going to explain why I made the mistake that I did. So as Dong is typing in, I wanted to find out um, any steamboats that had slave manifests that were coming from Missouri. So I typed in Missouri. I even clicked selected on Ancestry exact. I just wanted to look at Missouri. I got a list of 35 ships. And I clicked on the first one. It was a ship called Nancy. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. A ship called Nancy. And then it said that it had embarked for, it left St. Joseph for Mobile, Alabama. Now, because I had specifically filtered on Missouri, and there's a St. Joseph, Missouri, which is near a river, and it was plausible that people could have got, gotten into the Mississippi River from there. Um, I thought I was looking at a ship that left St. Joseph, Missouri. It didn't. It left St. Joseph, Florida. <clears throat> so Ancestry, if you're listening, you need to do a better job in terms of filtering the records. Um, I should have, because actually was speaking to Donia, we were looking at other records in the same set. It became, and there was actually one record that specifically said St. Joseph, Florida, that went to Mobile, Alabama. So I was a little upset about that. Uh, but we're going to come back to, there is an issue with these records not being properly indexed with a view towards, I'm going to call it the user experience, actually thinking how people need to use the, these kind of records. Um, so as Donnie was saying, basically, whatever you type into this field in Ancestry, you're going to get every single record. And that here's they have. the number. Here's the number right here, 60,000. 413 and that's Missouri and if you do it broad it's just gonna always go to that I don't care where you go but when when I like he said when we hit exact hit apply that's when I got the 35 so rule number one when searching in here make sure you hit exact but the I guess what's the misleading thing is like I said you click on Nancy got it. it will tell you that it left um, if you click on the record, it will tell you that it left St. Joseph, but it didn't give a state. It wasn't until later that we both realized, oh, they're talking about St. Joseph, Florida. Yeah, it was, it, it's not, it's somewhere within here that said Florida that we saw it, but this is the manifest for this particular, the Nancy um, boat, the, st the steamboat champion. Yeah. And, um, which left the port of St. Joseph. Right. And then arrived in, in Mobile, Alabama. Right. So you can see where I was really excited going, oh my God, I got St. Joseph. I got a Missouri record. Didn't get a Missouri record. Nope. So something within Ancestry's tagging metadata field needs to be adjusted for this. And it would also be, you know, you can search by names, but you can imagine you already were looking at Charles, Mary, Jane. You, type, you know, you're going to get probably 5,000 Charles in there. We're, we're trying know. to figure out a way to get around this, but we're, we're kind of stumped at the minute. Yeah. <laughs> but again, we can see, you know, again, there are actually, if you can open that up again, because there, there are family groups in here. Oh, oh, yeah, most definitely. The very first one is a family group. So you got Billy and Nancy, and then you got Bacchus, Deanna, Martha, and, and Susan. And Susan. And it says children of Billy and Nancy. So, and again, it's still doing the same thing, giving their ages, but doesn't give the ages of the kids. It doesn't give the height of the children. It just says that they're children. So this one, they don't even, mm. you know, care about the, the children. They're just telling you, oh, yeah, by the way, they got kids. Yeah. And, and a little further down, I believe, isn't this the one where there was a grandmother and a grandson or a grandchild? I didn't see that one. You you had that. You clicked on that one, I think, with the Buford. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, no, Scipio. here it is right here. Oh, there was Scipio. Scipio's grands, you've just, it's just gone out of view. If you scroll down, oh, I there see we it. go. I see it. I see it. Scipio is grandson of Lala or Lolly. Mm -hmm. which is right above him. 
And then oh. Lolly as Doll's Child. So the, again, they're they're spelling out those, hey, those so family relationships. And there's Lolly. I think right, that's no, her name. his dolls right here. Mm-hmm. Yep. So mother, daughter, grandson. That's crazy. All in one document. That's crazy. At least they're all together. <laughs> I guess. That's how true. That make, how does that make you feel? I, I mean, I don't know about y'all. I hate looking at this. And when we were looking at these, um, I told Brian, you know, I was like, you, you are making me sad again. So <laughs> it, it, I just, I hate looking at these things. And we have just enough time because this hour is just whew, the last three weeks. Our hours have just gone by. If you wouldn't mind opening up the National Archive one, the the kind of master list of of all that, of them. That first one that I did, and you said that's not the right one. <laughs> <laughs> We're saving the best for well, I I'm not going to say the best. We're going to save the the largest repository for lost. And we had they also have this at Family Search too, so you can find it there. Just to throw that out there. Okay. Yeah, actually, Family Search has about five or six of these inward and outward bound um, slave manifests. Oh wait, that is the Family Search one. I clicked the wrong one. You wanted the National Archives. Why is it not popping up? Nothing like technology. Right. <laughs> so uh, while we're waiting for this to open, does um, any other any other questions? Uh, no, you do not have to pay to use the National Archives online. Um, it is amazing for that. Nor do you have to pay to use Family Search. Those two are free. Okay, do you, it's, it's saying, this is number three, Slave Manifest National Archives Catalog Family Search. That's the one you want? Um, but, but, but I'll tell you what, if you click on that list, do you see the one that says Coast Wives Slave Manifest 1826 to 1830 Beaufort, South Carolina? No. Which list? Okay, if you click on link three, well, actually, we're rapidly running out of time. I don't think we're going to be able to get to this, unfortunately. Um, however, if people listening, if you go to the National Archives website, type in slave manifests, you are going to get a staggering list of them. Now, this is something, okay, I very much appreciate the National Archives making these of records available, for digitizing them. I am going to say that, again, this is where the user experience is everything. So, yeah, that one that's on, that says both first. Okay. It's in that first group. Is everything. <clears throat> because, unfortunately, in this collection, you have to go, if you're trying to find your, your family, you have to go through each and every film role from beginning to end. There are so many film roles in this thing. Um, it doesn't appear to be indexed. You can't really search on names. I don't even see a search functionality within this. So I'm just going to say if it was any other ancestry other than African-American ancestry, people wouldn't stand for it. So if the National Archive having to like go through roles upon roles upon roles upon roles of film. Um, so if the National Archives could actually make this searchable by, by names, by period, by port, again, user experience uh, would be amazing. Are we still waiting for that to pop up? It just, it's just not doing it. It just, it just <laughs> refuses. Okay. I think this is crazy. It just refuses to pop up. It's crazy. Because, again, what the National Archives also has are the inward and outward bound manifests for Baltimore, for Alexandria, 
for Philadelphia. I'm not sure about Boston, but it, it does Louisiana. have and Louisiana. Um, so oh. it does have those more northerly ports that also shipped enslaved people out of. So as I said, as a resource, it is awesome. It is amazing. It's disturbing and upsetting as some of the ones that we've that we've just seen, but it is equally invaluable. Um, I wish I could wave a magic wand and say that this was there was an easier way of going about doing this research, but at the minute, at the minute there isn't. So I just take the positive from the fact that the records are there at all. Yeah. So again, okay, so this was a touching, <laughs> you know, this was just that show. So um, I don't know. I it, we, we are thankful that you guys were able to walk, watch us, and we hope that we showed you some new stuff and that you learned some new things. Um, next week's show, another sad one, uh, researching breeders, children of breeders. So get ready. Yeah, get that ready. may be one that requires, um, some, some tissue. tissues <laughs> on, on that one. Um, but again, to kind of recap and kind of really break it, really break this down, when we know that our ancestors were taken into the deep south, well, I guess part of it is to understanding the difference between the last few generations of your family being in the deep south and then understanding what their earlier origin stories were. So again, so I've already spoken about someone, you know, speaking about people who were coming here from Cuba into Florida, who ended up moving over to Louisiana and, um, and Texas. So we know that our ancestors arrived here many different places in many different ways. Um, so like I said, this talk was more about what happened to them when they were already here and then their kind of their movement around as part of this this second middle passage. So hopefully, you know, by looking at that map, understanding the major trade routes, thinking about plot points to research more fully, using things like newspapers.com, or chronicling America or other different kinds of newspaper archives to find out more about slave traders who were bringing people into the areas where your the later generation of your family started to live in the deep south. Um, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of moving pieces. It takes a lot of patience. Um, but hopefully we, you, know, you can use what we've roughly gone over in this last hour to, to, break, through, to break through those barriers. Because yeah. I was saying to you on the phone, Donia, I could almost see how Moses Williams went from Hanover, North Carolina, to Caswell and the area around Caswell and then into Edgefield. You could almost see it on that map. Yeah, that's why I didn't look at the map. <laughs> no, I looked at it. Um, but it, it was it's yeah, you can you can definitely see all of that. I'm actually scrolling through the comments because this time guys, I really couldn't see your comments that much because of the way I had to share the screen. So I was going back and forth through my from my phone to here and you guys were saying a lot of a lot of stuff. Shelly was very happy. Um what you said this will make Shelly happy. She had a comment up like that. And then um she another thing that she said which was important was calling their names love you guys is so important and we were actually calling their names because no one has in so long so mm -hmm. you know that was crazy and henry goins asked a very good question any book any book recommendations nothing that's contemporary um but definitely do a do a google book search yeah yeah. On, on that one and, and again just just search on the on, search under the phrase slave route slave trading routes or even cough slave coffle routes right that would be that would be the other one so i do apologize that i wasn't able to put your um comments up today this time but that was because of how the screen was sharing and i don't know why it didn't let me do what i needed to do so um Thank you guys. It's already 4:59. This was an awesome show. Sad, but awesome. Uh, I enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Enjoy your dinner. I know I am. <laughs> I'm Donya Williams. 
<laughs> Enjoy your day. I'm Brian Sheffy. This has been Genealogy Adventures, and we will see you next week, Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Most definitely. See you later. See you later. <laughs>